Hello there, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me back here in TNO, playing as the United States of America. So as you can see on screen, we have three events to read, and we have, last time, well, we got back the ports of San Francisco and LA. Oh, we have, wow, we have four things to read, Jesus. But we also got back Hawaii and demilitarized the Panama Canal, which was great. And right now, we are not doing this. But with the Road to Justice, we are currently doing the Contel Pro program, and it was recommended from yesterday's comments that we do this as much as possible, and hopefully the Attorney General does not become silenced, because this way we lose a, a massive amount of support. Uh, yeah, cool. Let's go ahead and begin with a knight in position. <clears throat> the red-haired young man loosened his tie and discreetly tried to get some air down his Sweat soaked shirt. As the speaker on stage continued to drone on and on. Some nonsense about the supposed decline of the nation, he was not pleased when he had received his assignment. Aside from the odious company from within, which he now found himself. As a Connecticut boy, his blood was far too thick for Mississippi. Still, he could see why the bosses considered these groups a priority. There seemed to be dozens more at every meeting. He wondered how many of these men burned crosses. He was surprised how easy it was to ins insinuate himself within Yaki's followers. Apparently, all he had to do was, wear, quote, Spangler and throw around a couple of racial epithets, and you were in. Now he was in perfect place to start setting up operations and move his fellow agents into key positions within Yaki's hate groups. Hearing his name, fake though it was, that red-haired man jerked his head to the speaker on the stage. He was being called up, their friend from up north. He made his way to the podium to thunder supplies, but unfolded his speech. Written in Quantico, he thought, but they didn't need to know that. Taking a deep breath, and imagining himself one day sitting behind Hoover's desk, the young man began, My friends, we must re reverse the decline of the nation. A fox in the hen house. Cool. Get physical power. Beneath a full moon. The men filed out of the room still heat, reluctantly donning their suit jackets and tightening their ties. Humphrey put his hand on Kennedy's shoulder as he was about to leave, indicating wordlessly that they, had unfinished, that they had unfinished business. When they were alone, he closed the door and began restlessly pacing around the room. Kennedy tracked him with narrowed eyes. It seems like you've made some decisions I wasn't consulted on, began Humphrey. Acerbically, tossing Kennedy a si sidelong glance. I am not beholden to you, Hubert, uh, replied the president dryly, holding himself to him. Not every ruler feels the need to consult their vizier before every little decision. Humphrey stopped, sh stopped stock still and spun Kennedy. Good God, man. Can you hear yourself? You're speaking like a Roman emperor, a petty Caesar. His face was becoming rudy. You want to use Hoover's goons to investigate your own party? It's vile. I won't condone it. The purpose of cur curtailing justice is lost when you achieve it through the methods of a tyrant. Kennedy remained coolly detached through Humphrey's tirade. He took a sharp breath. Hubert, would St. George have tried to slay the dragon without a, uh, without a sword? Yeah. Uh, we can't stay on the high road when our enemies prove that they are willing again and again to stoop up to the dirtiest tactics available to them. A weapon is just a weapon. It is neither good nor evil, only a tool for the man who wields it to impose his will on the world. We will use the FBI to purge the enemies of justice um, from America. That's all there is to it. And with that closing remark, he turned on his heel, opened the door, and strode purposely from the room. Humphrey's sh shoulder slumped. He had seen the strange gleam from Kennedy's eyes as he spoke towards the end. What was he becoming? The ends justify the means, right? You know, if one group does one thing and you stoop down to their level? It gets a lot more interesting, we'll put it like that. New routines for police duty offenses, though. The president sent out a long note this afternoon to all the state police directors regarding procedures and routines for handling cases where police officers get reported for inappropriate conduct, both illegal actions and behavior contrary to police code. For far too many years, police officers have been allowed to take a break for six months while recovering and then come back to the force as if nothing ever happened. For even more serious cases, early retirements have been the norm. This is not and never was okay. It is a custom that systematically gives police officers the freedom to exercise their power beyond their mandate. <clears throat> It pardons police officers who accidentally shoot innocent people and even worse crimes. Kennedy's sent a clear message to the police in our nation that such action will no longer be tolerated. The note was leaked to the press and progressives across the country celebrate the president's clear voice in such matters. Republican Democrat voters are more skeptical. Conservatives and the Democrats argue that the president should not interfere in the judicial branch, that the president should keep his powers limited to the executive domain. Republicans, on the other hand, are more concerned with how this might limit police efficiency. The results of Kennedy's routines are yet to be seen, of course. May they be good, though, despite any criticism. This should get them in shape. And snapshots from Stonewall. At a quiet night in Stonewall Inn, <clears throat> barely anyone notices my scribbling notes in the corner. This corner of America is obscure, but it shares the tendency for aching introspection. Abbreviated loneliness hammered out via cheap glass cups. Beyond the occasional whisper and wordless glances, not too much makes it out of the haze of anonymi anonymity. And, may and long may it remain so. The haze is the only thing that separates this part of town from the moralizing glaze of the rest of America. It's the only thing that keeps it safe. As I'm writing this, a pair of young men in their 20s, perhaps, one Latino, one Caucasian, are swerving to the aching beat of satisfaction. Their patterned shoes tap out a rhythm at once familiar and strange, just irregular enough to inject vitality while keeping pace with the rest. 
nor with a, with a beat. Their bodies trace patterns so bold that they'd be scandalous anywhere else, but here in the trace of lips and hands on waist, it achieves a careworn familiarity like an elderly seamstress fixing an old cardigan. <clears throat> If this had been a different country, perhaps they would have become dancers, but the lipstick and the gaudy dresses they wear would kill their careers, and a lot more besides, in this one. America is home to the brave, and this, but this land isn't free, not for some, not yet. For now, there is the freedom of the swirl and dance, and curve of dance, the celebration of joy in life in a world with so little else. Another man offers his hand, and I rise to dance, and the gentle rhythm and the smoky swirls, I sense some vast and gentle ecstasy, and with every sway, I come closer to its source. Life, life thrives in the strangest of places. And now we have our own focus, too. So, <clears throat> like I said yesterday, we got through the Hawaii thing. We went on to Tokyo. We struggled a little bit. At least I struggled a little bit. But we got Hawaii back and had a good time. Well, we didn't get the senators from their elected senators, but that's okay. But we have it back, which is great. But now we got to kill our support. Beating the Southern Bullies? Hmm. Now, this might provoke a crisis, but hopefully not. Probably not since it's already 68 and it's June, so. Seasons change and crises, or crises come and pass, both being, bearing stormy winds and that do away with facades to unveil the true hearts of man. Such has undoubtedly been the case in America in recent years as the MPP continues the onward march to delivering freedom and equality, true freedom and equality, in the country. While all that has happened, is it really any surprise that the winds of stormy changes unveiled the Dixiecrats' hearts and found a rotting, fetid organ? Long have we discovered, disavowed them from what should be, and is becoming a party of progress, and yet their presence lingers in their home states, ready to impede the federal government from enforcing its own laws in every step of the way. A party of vipers, through and through. Perhaps it can only be handled as vipers should. Investigate southern leaders will be unlocked. Oh boy, I can't wait. And we're currently, currently infiltrating the John Birch Society. I'm not really sure what that is, but I think I've heard of them before. I think I have, so. Yeah, we definitely got to continue campaigning, increase party unity. Let's see... The National Progressives are still united. American Society is disunited, which is good. Uh, the RDs are working together very well. And we are campaigning for Republican Democrats for now. So, uh, Wiretapping? Ooh. Oh, that's, that's perfect. Yeah, covert operations. Yeah, get some wiretapping. That'd be great. Agency infiltration? Nice. Nice. Anything here? Yep. Less than $70 billion in terms of uh, debt. Good. <clears throat> All right, intimidate them, fabricate stories on them. Let's go ahead and mm, let's fabricate stories on the Yaki's. Cool. There was a comment from yesterday saying that if we so we selected the Republican Democrats to you know win, make them win the election. Someone said that <clears throat> if you select a party and don't campaign for them, the other party has a much greater chance of winning the election, so maybe I should have chosen the NPP and done nothing for it. So no campaigning, but it is what it is. Now I'm not really sure what this does, since it says Bobby Contel Pro dot twenty dot desk. But we get some political power. That's kinda of cool. I like political power. And let's see. Black market. Getting England. We already have England on our side. My, my apologies, my voice. Every time I try to record TNO, it's like my voice is like doesn't want to work for some reason. Let's see. Do you get more? I kind of like this one. I like any of that political power game, but especially that war support. You get five percent more war support in total. It's not really worth doing right now, though. So, political landscape. We don't need to see that because I don't want to unify the party anymore. Advanced drop tanks. Cool. And it's 68, so all of this is ahead of time a little bit. Light aircraft. How about heavy aircraft? We did that already. Yeah, not much we can do about that. Air doctrine, we've already finished. Naval doctrine, we should continue doing, which we are. Yeah, we're running out of things to do here with research. That's 0.5 years ahead. I mean, we have all this other stuff we could use, but we're kind of good. Let's get some APC stuff. And maybe some more tank stuff. Don't mind if we do. So nice. Over a five, half, over half a trillion in GDP. Number's never high enough, though. What are we building, actually? Civilian factory in Kansas? Cool. Ah, uh, the 1968 National Progressive Primaries. Oh, boy. With loud cheers and celebrations on the floor of the Miami Beach Convention in the Miami Beach, Florida, it has greeted Robert F. Kennedy as they formally accept the nomination of the MPP to run for a second term as President of the United States. As the first White House occupant to never be to neither be a Republican or Democrat since Millard Fillmore left in 1853. It was only natural that RFK would get another crack at four more years in the highest office of, of America. There are too many pr primary challengers. Senator Margaret Chase Smith of Maine, representing a new business-oriented faction of the 
FR NPP and the CMPP leader Michael Harrington, both seeking to bring the party and nation more in line with the preferred path. However, neither won more than a handful of delegates in the primaries. Both were overshadowed by the current president's popularity and leadership within the party. Now that RFK has secured the nomination with a little weight in opposition, the plan is now to face the Republican Democrats and show that the past four years wasn't a fluke in American political history, but the start of a new party, new two-party system. Another two-party system? Just break it all up. Just become a four-party state. That's all. Uh, it's interesting that... Now, Michael Harrington, I've heard he's like... He's supposed to be like the... Is he supposed to be on the far left? Because I've heard that he might be... Or unless there's someone else. Maybe it's Harrison? I don't know. But... Uh, okay, whatever. Four more years. Well, maybe, maybe not. Especially if we're going to be beating southern bullies. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I love it. The Saturday Night Massacre. Oh. The Attorney General has gone public. Our allies have been silenced. Oh. Unjust justice. Hmm. Stop the redlining. There was a comment from yesterday saying that it's disappointing that I want to get rid of RK after we've been really, really successful. I and mean, we passed civil rights. We got Hawaii back. We got the ports back. And now that we're going to screw it all up, kind of sucks. More liberal judge. An American unculture. I kind of want to keep doing this, but I think we can kind of wait. I don't want to lower my GDP. I mean, we can help out people here and stuff. But it really doesn't matter too much. Aid war support. Fortress Australia. Yeah, that's, that stuff is okay. I'm going to go ahead and do... Unjust justice. This is an, 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 an American unculture. They go by many names. Colored, African American, black, negro, poor ghettos and ramshackle slums define the communities. Simultaneously close and far from the services offered freely to the white American. Hatred and isolation define their experience. Establishments close their doors shut at their presence. Lawmen eye their every footstep. Whereas the Nazis and their, had their Jews and the Japanese and Koreans, these descendants of African slaves are America's own branded outcasts, proving to all that the words which hearken to our nation's founding ideals are worth less than mud. True equality cannot be achieved until our outcasts are lifted up to the standard and dignity which all Americans rightly deserve. For this purpose, President Kennedy swears to continue advancing their cause even after their victory in Congress over the Civil Rights Act. Cool. Beautiful. Brothers at War. Great conspiracy. Oh, perhaps it might be true. So, Kennedy declared across the Resolute Desk at Humphrey and Clark. Clark was leaning forward to jabbing the air with his finger while Humphrey sat back inscrutably silent. Fucking believable, continued Clark, ruby face and spittle mouth. Have you lost your goddamn mind? There may be a bunch of segregationist, racist, obstructionist confederates, but the rightists in our party are our brothers. Our party brothers. Clark collapsed back into his chair, exhausted. Christ sakes, Bobby, we hate him as much as you do, but we should be focusing on reducing their influence within the party, not going after them with a phalanx of spies that, like we're the second coming of Nixon. <laughs> Clark slumped back, panting and puffing. Humphrey sighed and leaned forward. Listen, Bobby, I'll keep this brief. Ramsey and I can't be part of this. It's an insult to democracy and the Constitution. I want you to first as a friend. Now you make me to come to you as a vice president. This is a formal complaint. Kennedy slammed his fist down on the desk, suddenly full of vitriol. Humphrey had no desires. Kennedy had been flying off the handle more and more, often lately, whenever he was challenged. Do you two... Do you two... Began Kennedy, barely keeping his rage in check. Know who you're talking to? I am the goddamn president. I have no choice. <laughs> This has to be done if we want to keep Thurman and Eastland's minions in check. When the president does it, this means it's not illegal. Believe me, <laughs> this is the right thing to do, the only thing to do. This is how we save the nation. He raised his arms above him and stared at the immaculate whitewashing, whitewashed ceiling. Later, when he was seething alone in the Oval Office, Kennedy found his thoughts circling invariably back to Clark and Humphrey. They had outed him as traitors to the cause of justice. Something had to be done. They had to be silenced before they destroyed everything he'd been striving to achieve. My way or the highway. Oh, man, this is just... Oh, my goodness. I can't... Well, I can silence AG. Oh boy, um, yeah, I just can't stop but la like laugh because I don't. If I was really going to do a real RFK run, and I will someday, I, I would definitely not be doing this stuff. Like, yeah, the second coming of Nixon. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. It would be good. Post updated, cool. Ooh, hey, look, New Hampshire. We got that Infil <laughs> agency infiltration. This is working perfectly right now. Surveillance aircraft. I mean, I'm not sure how much you can do with that against the you know far right NPP, but hey. You know, we do us, I guess. The 68 Republican Democrat primaries. Oh boy, it has come down to this. A few days in the International Amphitheater of Chicago, Illinois. The primaries are over, the delegates have been selected, and now it's time to see who will lead the Republican Democratic Party into the 68 election. There are now only two viable candidates in a race that has been seen many trying to win the keys to the White House. Arizona Senator and proud firebrand conservative Barry Goldwater, which is, if you look him up, he's actually quite an interesting guy. Or Ohio Governor and famed astronaut. John Glenn. For months in debates on TV and radio, it's out rallies from coast to coast and living in rooms, living rooms and over the dinner tables of everyday Americans. A battle between Barry and John is rage. Pins with their faces and slogans like, In your heart, you know he's right. And soar to new heights with Glenn. Posters, newspaper ads, cardboard hats, and all the memorabilia of a campaign seeking to win the chance to be the RD standard bearer. Both are claiming that only they can end the anomaly. That is the National Progressive Party's RFK, who is now sits at the 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. The first non-Republican or Democrat to hold the highest office in land. 
since before the civil, U.S. Civil War over 100 years ago. But before they can focus on the MVP, they have to get the nod at the convention. But as the night drags on, ballot after ballot shows little movement between Goldwater and Glenn. One, finally, one of the few favorite songs left on the ballot. They're only only there because some delegates hope that their hope that the chosen candidate could serve as a compromise candidate finally folded. So with the last ballot, the clear result is... Oh, I would like to do that, but... Oh, man, we gotta go with Mr. Buckeye. I'm sorry. This is what I wanted to do since the first episode. So, Magnolia Fo Follies. Oh, boy. Jackson. And the latest scandal to engulf the National Progressive Party's minority wings. A certified list of members of Francis Park... Parker Yaki's extreme right faction in Mississippi, who are also members of the KKK, have been made public. The shocking extensive list, anonymously sent to the newspapers around the country, includes several major figures within the party in Mississippi, and features members of Yaki's inner circle, all of whom have vehemently denied any association with the Triple K, and says that the list is fraudulent in an attempt at slander. Or slender. Probably slander. Outrage in the response to the scandal has come from both the general public and those in MPP itself. Speaking on the radio from Detroit, where he is conducting a series of speeches, President Kennedy said, I received the news today with total and utter disgust that members of my own proud party associate themselves with vile racist and enemies of progress. <clears throat> I will make it a priority to free the party from the insidious reactionary influence to ensure that all within the party are committed to the cause of freedom and justice for all Americans. With repeated scandals crippling the, the right-wing factions of the MPP, it seems that the president's center faction has risen to an unassailable dominance within the party. In his lavish Detroit hotel room, the president put down the newspaper and laid back in his bed. He felt truly invincible. There was nobody with the power to stop him from annihilating his enemies in the party. He would create a new, better America, and his legacy, legacy would last forever. As long as nobody finds out what he did to get there. Oh, boy. I still probably still can't campaign, right? We're not really campaigning yet. So, okay. So we can silence them. Infiltrate the far right. I think we already infiltrate, infiltrated them, though. John Birch. <laughs> silence in the cabinet. Don't forget what happens to Rob's PR. Mm. Oh, how do we do that? Sil oh, I guess we probably have to silence the cabinet to do that. So maybe we'll not do that. Intimidate them. Let's go ahead and harass Yakius leaders just because that costs the most here. So let's try that one. Sounds like fun. As I want to cut off or cut out more debt. Oh, very good, very good, very good, very good. We still need more main battle tanks. We got plenty of APCs though. Even though we probably won't. We might be in a war later on this in this campaign. I really have no idea. Uh, I don't. We could spend a little bit more money. But let's see. Military 19 billion. I mean, obviously, civilian spending is the highest one right here, which is not cool, but. Okay. MLK uh, Jr. has been assassinated in 68, July 30th. Horrible news has just come out of Memphis, Tennessee. Just after 6 in the evening, civil rights leader Dr. MLK Jr. was shot while taking or talking with colleagues on the balcony of Lorraine Motel. The bullet fired from a boarding house across the street and centered, entered through his cheek, smashing his jaw and penetrating into his spinal cord. Wow. Dr. King was rushed to St. Joseph's Hospital, where he was pronounced dead just an hour later. In a short address to the press at St. Joe's, Jesse Jackson, the well-known organizer and ally of Dr. King, mourned the fallen activist, claiming that Dr. King died in his arms. Jackson stated that, this strategy must not be a mere partisan issue, but one that unites us all, sons and daughters of God, to a higher calling. Oh, that is not good. For 30 days, extremism will grow. Nice. Also, there was another comment from yesterday saying that the Great Lakes, you can't really see them that well. And, you know, uh, oh, this is part of Canada, too, huh? A lake province in northern Ontario. Or Ontario. Ah, Lake Michigan. Ah, uh, yeah. Now, I, I don't remember the Great Lakes that well. This is Lake Michigan, definitely. I think this is Erie? Images from a funeral. A simple farm wagon, brown and faded green, pulled by a pair of mules through the streets of Atlanta. Dignitaries, celebrities, celebrities, men and women of all faiths, gathered in church at as Ralph Abernathy remarked on one of the greatest or the darkest hours of mankind. A hundred thousand people crowding these three and a half miles of roadway watched the procession go by. Coretta Scott ja King, Jesse Jackson, Andrew Young, John Lewis, Walter Reuther, Mahalia Jackson singing Take My Hand, Pref Precious Lord, more tears and grief than any human mind could possibly comprehend. At the end, everyone sings We Shall Overcome, and everyone prays that they will. Someday. A dark day. It's alright, we're still harassing Yakius leaders, so it's okay, right? Ah, uh, an, an American unculture. Integration and the good life. Stop the redlining... The specter of racism does not manifest slowly through the hateful insults, lynch mobs, segregated buses, and burning crosses. The creeping devil makes it well-known blueprints and sliding rules. Uh, city plans and well-crafted models of subdivisions and suburbs, malice obf obfuscated in plain sight. Public maps and pure intuition unveil the chicanery hiding underneath facades of neutral gray concrete. Cool. And we have 24 days. The hidden arm. Ah, subs. Naval doctrine stuff. Cool. Let's go ahead and grab some global range operations. Very good. The black man's misery. Even after the passing of the Civil Rights Act, African Americans still face hideous discrimination and inequality and often find themselves deprived of the basic right to afford it to those of the paler persuasion. 
We cannot stop here. Initiatives or initiatives like integrating schools by busing in black students, increasing racial integration in American suburbs and neighborhoods may be contentious across the nation, not just across the South, but we can't let the overly vocal racist sway our progress towards integration. Besides, surely the Southern majority supports the spirit of freedom and liberty for the fellow citizens intended by our following fathers. Whatever opposition we face, it is our manifest duty, not destiny, but duty, to drive the nation towards full equality for all Americans, no matter the race. America is clay, and we are the sculptor. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Actually, let's see this. It's election season again. It's always fun when it's election season. There's a little bit of lag there. Holy cow. Serbia starts with Germans. Serbia remains bonded in chains. Surveillance act. Yep. It's quite divided. And we love it that way. And to continue with RFKs, we're going to be hacking some computers. Love it. Let's go ahead and grab some... Not that. Some of this. Light exterior development. Even more breakthrough for the APCs. Very good. I just want to pay y'all some debt, please. 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 I mean, we've done really well. I, mean, we, I forget how much we started with. Was that 100, 100 billion? Was it 150 billion? 200 billion? I can't remember how much uh, we started with in terms of uh, debt. But we've done really well just cutting, slashing, slashing, and building ourselves up as well at the same time, too. So, At the same time, though, we got to remember, you know what? Context in Western Siberia. We've been approached with an interesting proposition from the foreign office of Sverdlovsk in Western Siberia. Being a government very similar to ours, they seem to wish for far more open relations. Having a government in Western Siberia that aligns with us may be beneficial. They've asked us to recognize them as a legitimate government of Western Siberia. This is a major step in opening relations with them, and may anger the rival government slightly, but will not damage our relations with any other Russian government beyond repair that we may also hold an interest in. West Siberia has also requested trade relations. They have plenty of resources, oil especially, that could be very valuable to us. We also hold uh, many things that could be valuable to them, so there's no reason not to agree. Sounds like a good deal. Tell them that they said yes, yes. We'll s let's see what we get. Oh my goodness, are they are they fighting here down here? Or ooh, 2001 in Space Odyssey. They're not fighting, so which is okay. So if this is a case, um, after this is done, after this episode, I'm probably oh hello, Maria. Oh, let's see the Siberian plan. Cool. I'm probably going to unite them under one nation just so that we can move maybe Russia ahead. Maybe once we get to 69, maybe maybe no no never mind. Because I if I remember how, when I played as Tom and Social Democracy under Shostakovich. They have to wait until 69 to actually start uniting places, so we'll see what happens. I'll, I'll keep an eye on this, just because I want to see if Russia can unify. But anyways, a space odyssey. After years of development, <clears throat> the celebrated director Stanley Kubrick has come out with his latest epic feature, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Set in the next millennium, 2001 centers around the German spaceship Ant Antdeckung 1 on a long journey to Jupiter. Its crew, Andreas Bogenmann and Franz Teich, are helped in their day-to-day -day activities by the powerful artificial intelligence EPAC. However, as the film goes on, it becomes clear that Epac has decided to kill the crew. In a sense struggle, made all the more nerve-wracking by Kubrick's long t long takes and understated sound understated sound design, Bogenmann is able to is able to deactivate the Epac, who morphly sings Still Knocked as the circuits are disconnected. Bogenmann then realizes that the mission of Antakun Ains is to investigate an alien monolith orbiting Jupiter. The monolith transports Bogenmann across time and space, transforming him into a bizarre space fetus floating beside Earth. Audiences have been divided over the film. Some call it meaningless drivel, while others have found it to be the most enjoyable, especially when paired with certain substances. <laughs> Whatever the reaction, Kubrick has certainly created a memorable feature film. My goodness, it's full of stars. Full of gas and hot energy. And maybe even cold energy. Oh, the riots? The King riots. Okay, Paul's updated. Very cool. We've got two days left for that, which is awesome. Can we pull yet? Nope. It's only September 1st. Oh, man, we, we don't have that much time. If it, things don't go great, I will pull some strings and fade in, fade out, like I normally do, to make sure that things go oh, the way we probably want. Mm, intimidate them. Silence a cabinet. Let's see. I don't want to do that. Fabricate stories. Let's go ahead and... Let's go intimidate them. Stop the red lining. Cool. And integration and the good life. Redraw school districts. Let's do unjust justice first. America, as we've come to realize, is a land of towering contrast as much as it is a land of towering skylines. We preach the word of freedom, but also keep freedom away from the swaths of our people. We preach exercising the God-given right to vote, but we also keep that right away from those who we deem unworthy of voting. So we, so do we bluster and boast in the liberties we supposedly cherish, but in the same breath order judges and sheriffs to snuff the opportunity to cherish liberty for a great many Americans. We have come to government and see the injustice that has seeped into its sinews, and have rightly decided that this state of affairs cannot stand. What is unjust must be set just at last. Towards this, we must turn our stern gaze to the lawmen who had overseen the affections of unjust laws. Cool. Very nice. 
I wish we had more growth, but you know, you can only do so much red lining. Today, among among the myriad other little humiliations they must suffer every day, African Americans are often the victims of community supported informal segregation known as red lining. The custom of white people preventing blacks from settling in certain areas and forcing them into racial ghettos by refusing loans, charging exorbitant interest rates, and enacting indiscriminatory banking practices. Red lining is a time honored tradition in homogeneous homogeneously white areas whose homeowners owners want to remain so, and needless to say, it needs to be stomped or stopped if we want to properly integrate America's towns and suburbs. Re redistricting redlining would be very unpopular with business owners and bankers, as well as the wider white population in general, but the unpopularity of our policies has never stopped us from trying to do the right thing before. To deal with redlining, we could either do what's right and go hard on banning the practice, erasing every loophole, or we could try and preserve some of our political capital and use some small but meaningful restrictions to place instead. The reactionaries won't be happy either way, but if we compromise, we might be able to avoid their outrage for once. Caution. Erase the invisible boards once and for all. Let's do that. We want to piss off as many people as, as possible. Just because we want a certain Buckeye. When, when do we campaign? Currently campaigning or campaign is cooled down. Oh, well, we can't campaign right now. It's only September 9th, though. Red lines erased. And what's become a welcome surprise are strict restrictions on red lining generated... Very little blowback from the community, and even the usual suspects in Congress have been fairly muted on the issue. It appears we misjudge it. The average middle American disproves of discriminatory making and lending practices as much as possible. Hey! Black people will now lo no longer be subject to the shady financial practices that have kept them in ghettos across America and will face significantly less pushback when they attempt to settle in historically white communities. All in all, we've been able to remove one of the biggest obstacles to the racial integration of America's neighborhoods, and, once, and for once, doing the right thing wasn't painful at all. Wow. And I thank heavens for that. Poverty rate would begin to decrease, and it will begin to rapidly improve. Oh, that's cool. Nice. 13 days left. Let's see. Let's come down here. Poverty, yes. Improve that poverty rate. Very good. Four months. Not bad, but we should be able to improve that eventually. Let's continue hacking computers. There's no computer that RFK cannot hack. You know what? Actually, we're going to slash budget. Actually, I should not have done that. I'm so used to touching that red button that now we only get 0.69 political power day. That's nice and all, but that's okay. Whatever. Especially with the way, the way we want to you know, get elected. We're going to be spending a lot of money, probably. So, uh, increase weapon empla emplacements. Why not? Debate with John Glenn, Governor John Glenn, President RFK. We're all smiles before the cameras, shaking each other's hands warmly before turning to the podiums. The unlikely astronaut leader of the RDs and the patrician turned prodigal son of the MPP faced each other on the stage, sharpening their verbal knives to draw blood from the slight differences in their dreams of a brighter future. President Kennedy, you claim to be a man devoted to justice, to address society's ills. Glenn opened, but the elderly, the poor, the pensioners, the veterans who fought for America's freedom in the last war, their disappointment is palpable. And when I talked to them, that in President, Ke President Kennedy's rule, some suffering is more worthy than others of red dress. President Kennedy leaned into his podium, nothing could be further from the truth. The history of America is the history of how African Americans and the worker have labored for far too long without any avenue to address their deprivation. I resent the accusation that the government should ignore the plight of the most deprived in the name of incrementalism. For justice delayed is justice denied. What is that with Glenn? Uh, they said with Glenn. I'm sorry, Kennedy. I'm sorry. I'd love to help you out, but... Mm. Infiltrate the far right. Intimidate the Yawkeys. Silencing the cabinet. Fabricate stories. Let's fabricate stories next. The opposition's campaign. Yeah, they're, we're very strong. Oh, I, actually, hold on. Did we silence AG yet? I, I didn't look at that. No, we got a week. Oh, boy. Okay, cool. Um, Something's going to happen. Bobby Cottontail Pro. desk. Cool. I wonder what that does. I think we vote on November 3rd again, don't we? Oh, man. We could rally people, but... The opposition's campaign. Is there anything else we could do here? A little bit of lag, trying to autosave, get to the next month, political landscape. Ready for anything, working well together. Yeah. I don't want to increase party unity, that'd be bad. The world's towards justice, East Southern Fears, no. Campaign for civil rights? Wouldn't do that anyways. Campaign with Wallace? Nope. Nope. Fight for schools. I like to do that one too. Yeah, I should not have cut civ uh, civilian spending. Woof! The fall. Oh, hold on, let's see. Racism, Southern Fried. With the demise of redlining, many neighborhoods across America have rapidly begun integrating as better off African Americans move into traditionally white communities, soaking the fury of white, white middle class suburbanites who can't imagine any fate worse than having a black neighbor. <laughs> Naturally, despite our best hope that the people's better world or better nature would take over and this would lead to a new era of racial harmony, there's been widespread discontent in integrated communities, particularly in the South, some of which has escalated. This morning, one such incident arising from integration pushback appeared on the front page of RFK's newspaper, making him cringe from something other than his morning grapefruit. 
Apparently, a pair of black teenagers whose family had recently moved into a previously redlined suburb in Atlanta attempted to order lunch at the local greasy spoon diner, and the owner, one Leslie Maddox, refused to serve them and asked them to leave. Despite this obviously being illegal since the passing of the Civil Rights Act, Maddox's supposed right to choose his customers has become Dixie's clause du jour, and Maddox has already appeared on several right-leaning southern radio stations bemoaning the sudden change in his community's demographic makeup. We have to respond to this quickly before it spires out of control, to make it publicly known that the regressive racism of Maddox and his ilk has no place in modern America. However, Despite being a thoroughly unpleasant man, Maddox has gained a strong measure of support from the Southern Whites and reactionaries everywhere. We could formally prosecute him to make an example at the risk of our stoking the political fire, or we could give him a slap on the wrist to make our disapproval known without starting a fight. Throw the book at him. Slap him in the wrist and let all blow over. We're going to throw the book at him. The fall. All hell has broken loose. Well, this morning, Ramsey Clark's inflammatory report on our use of con Cointelpro. I always said that wrong was on the front page of every newspaper in America. To put it lightly, it has been a catastrophic political disaster to the scale of which surpasses all other in American history. It's like they've already forgotten about Nixon. Wow. Uh, we we have everyone in Washington, literally everyone, going for our throat. Our friends have distanced themselves, and even our staunchest allies won't return our calls. Thurman's coterie have been screaming themselves hoarse all day, and the most worryingly, the president has already received numerous death threats. Wow. The president administered the Kennedy administration teeters on the edge of annihilation as the discussion of impeachment begins behind closed doors. In the Oval Office, the President slump, sits slumped in his chair. He hasn't moved for almost 15 minutes full and can't even find the will to do anything. Kennedy decided, looking around at the room, what he once played host to both his father and his brother. How would he be remembered now? As a stalwart of civil rights, an enemy of injustice, and a champion of progress, or as a cowardly, corrupt slimeball who uses power to convene contravene the Constitution, and to send an army of spies against his political adversaries. Kennedy clenched his hand into fists and sat up. No, he couldn't let himself fall into despair. For God's sake, he was a president. I have to move forward, he thought, as he picked up the phone. This can't be the end. It can't. Even as he felt the newfound energy rushing through him, he knew he was lying to himself. This is the end of my presidency. I'm effed. Oh, boy. I'm sorry. I, I don't want to do that. I really didn't want to do that. I... I wanted Glenn from the outpo... from the outpost, or outpost, from the very beginning of this campaign, like I said earlier, but... I don't want to really hurt RFK, because we've been so successful! We've been so successful! Oh, it hurts me. It hurts me. On the inside. Maybe a little bit. Maybe not. I don't know. But, ah, uh, Cheeseburger with a side of intolerance. As we expected, prosecuting Maddox for illegally denying service to his black customers has been highly contentious. Radio demagogues and the right-wingers in Congress have been hollering all week that we're being cruel and unjust, pushing the angle that Maddox is a victim of the federal government punishing average Joe for setting, setting the rules in their own businesses, apparently willfully ignoring the fact that denying service to someone based solely on the race is just as illegal as any other crime. Unsurprisingly, it's all... As in a furor over our treatment of Maddox, and we've also gotten a fair amount of grumbling from the more prejudiced white, whites north of the Mason-Dixon. Nevertheless, this was the right thing to do. The people need to understand that integration is the future, and they need to accept it if they want to be do if they want to do business. Despite the blowback, at least African Americans know that we're willing to go to bat for them, even at political risk to ourselves. Hopefully, the trust we built up with them will prove worthwhile at the ballot box. Integration is here to say, get used to it. Hmm, man, we're pissing off a lot of people. That's fun. Observe court practices? Sure. Laws may come in from Congress, but it is a humble court which interpret their letter and spirit. Owing to this, the men and women who extensively study America's labyrinthine, labyrinthian set of laws and effectively decide how laws will look like to the American people. Should Congress and court come at odds with one another, a situation would undoubtedly arise when any of the laws the when any laws the former conceived will diverge significantly in wording by the time the nation's law enforcement received their memorandums. There exists no better instance of this phenomenon than the ex extent legal systems of our southern states, manned by Dixiecrats and the sympathizers. Courts of law from North Carolina to Texas have long had a free hand in impending the implementation of civil rights laws within the, their jurisdictions. Sifting through their archives of verdicts and rulings is, unfortunately, a burden that we cannot do without. At least from there, kickstarting the dismantlement of Jim Crow is as simple as replacing the powdered wigs, apparently keeping it aloft. Oh, we can't do this yet. No, we gotta save political power and intimidate the Yaquis. We might do that. We'll see what happens. I'm really interested in seeing what happens. Cicero's Nightmare. The Constitution promises justice to all, but any fool who can see that is a falsehood. The grinding machinery of justice crushes many undeserving of punishment throughout its unsolvable gears, cruelly and justly ruining the lives of thousands of Americans every year. Like so many American institutions, our courts are as senior and corrupt as any despots. Like so many things in America, the courts are worse to blacks. African Americans, though deserving of the same rights as any other Af American, are subjected to endless humiliation and poor treatment every day, and when they fight back, they're ground through the courts like the lowest, lowliest common criminal. It's their duty to discover the taint and corruption from our courts to provide fair and equal justice to every American, no matter who they are. But like all of our reforms, it won't be easy. To start with, we should establish a committee to scrutinize court practices across the nation and identify the blight so we might tear it up. And justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Cool. Hey, we got that political power we needed. Cool. We could silence the cabinet by this point. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I really want to see, like, how things are looking up. We did want to campaign with the Republican Democrats, but we can't campaign for them. Which makes some sort of sense. Why would the NPP campaign for the RDs? Uh... Cryptographic engineering, please. Thank you. Spinning cogs. Cool. Let's see. Any important decisions? Ooh, polls are updated. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, 
Let's close it out just in case. Oh, uh, it's... Mm, well, no, actually it's not too bad, maybe. MPP has a small lead. Oh boy. Even with what we did, we still might not win. So, there's a chance. So, Or we might still win, actually. Which is something we don't want. <laughs> but you never know. The Upper South is kind of a toss-up to a degree. Southwest is kind of a toss-up. Anything else? Opposition's campaign. Campaign. Ooh. Okay. Change in popular conservative democracy. Maybe that was good, maybe? I don't know. Sense and cabinet infiltrate intimidate, intimidate the Yaki's. That's next. Oh, but oh man, it's October 29th at Folsom Prison. Their waves are filled with cheers and applause from the inmates of Folsom Prison today as Johnny Cash's new live album at Folsom Prison hit the shelves. This album was recorded live at a concert. Cash performed at Folsom State Prison in California. It's a runaway success. The album has sold out at record stores across the nation, and Folsom Prison Blues has shot up to number one on Billboard Top 40. Johnny Cash shed much, much of his former outlaw image after getting help for this amphetamine addiction in '67, but he's not given up his compassion for the incarcerated Americans and his advocacy for their rights. Cash has had several meetings with former President Nixon in the early '60s about prison reform, and expressed interest in meeting with President Kennedy as well. The album's lyrics reflect the harsh and alienating conditions of prison life and the yearning of prisoners to break free and return to their loved ones. This album may have reinvigorated Cash's previously ailing career, and Columbia Records has suggested that a future live album might be recorded at San Quentin State Prison. Whatever the future may hold for the man in black, this album has clearly captivated the hearts and minds of that nation for years to come. How is a man to go to prison in California for murder in Nevada anyway? Uh, so, like I said earlier, I might just fade in, fade out, depending on the election results. So, we'll see what happens. If it happens, because... I just want, I, I want Glenn. Now, it's the first time I've said this in campaign. It's like episode 9 or 10 here. But, I we I want Glenn, man. I'm sorry. I want Glenn. Even though he's from Ohio, which Ohio is so high. We'll put it like that. Ohio is Ohio. Observe court practices. And underlying problem, a racist prison system. A racist prison system. One close look at prison tallies and registers across the country reveal a stark pattern. Colored men, predominantly from the ghettos and gutters of its sprawling cities, filling more of its cells than whites. Another look at the records, loitering, petty thievery, minor brawls, sentencing by verdicts with half decades behind the dank and fetid walls of the Gray Bar Hotel. Oftentimes more, by the time the black man leaves the rusted iron chains of prison, the court of public opinion will have judged him guilty again, and so they will remain paupers left with no choice but to break the law once more to seek their, for their own sakes. Misjustice indeed, yet a misjustice tolerated the best, at worst encouraged. For decades, whatever the heavy high end of the law has reached, we must address this. The warning. Oh boy. The Stonewall Inn is a spotlight of it, light and loud laughter in the world slipping into autumn. The sounds of occasional retching aside, the inn is a good place, and the crowds know it to be far more than just a building. For many of its patrons, it's the only place that can truly be themselves, but autumn is sweeping in, one chill breeze at a time. The suns have been there for a long while, the mayor is riding on the coattails of moral cleanup movement sweeping the country, and the officers sent to do the collection duties. One calls it the offering bag, with only a hint of irony, from the inn tell the bartenders of the anti-mafia team that they're forming in the back of the Metropolitan Department. It's not like the community they formed here hasn't been known the wrath of the cops, but this time it'll be different. Change is coming to America, as the president says, over the airways, but some changes are less welcome than others. The bartender methodically cleans up his cops half an hour before closing time. He'll take care of the mess in the toilets afterwards, and there's always a mess in the toilets. He got hired by the Don, same as all the staff, but he's come to love the place. The patrons are gaudy and have a glint in their eyes, but the real life, they're living here in the damp spaces. He looks at a sleeping customer hunched over his cups and smiles wanely. Whatever happens next, he'll stay there with a ship, even if the hole's leaking. His passengers deserve nothing less. Hope glows as the day glows dim. Cool. November 7th. Ah, elections. Shh. Everyone be quiet. I can't hear the TV. If you want to read that, that happens before, so... Oh. Oh, boy. Defended the loss or seat. Oh, boy. We actually might have... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. The results are in. Uh, so, and they're pretty much what we expected. Our Justice Committee's report has confirmed our suspicions that America's justice institutions are completely corrupt and in desperate need of reform to curb the horrible practices they engage in. Our courts seem to have little to no integrity. Judges and juries are horrifically prejudiced against African Americans who are both found guilty more often and receive harsher sentences than whites on trial for the same crimes. Blacks are frequently denied judicial rights promised to all in the Constitution and are often hoodwinked or forced into confessing by racist cops intent on sending black men to prison for no other reason than the color of the skin. The injustice perpetrated upon Americans by the very system meant to uphold its utterly disgusting and its total subversion of everything in America stands for. We have to fix this now. In America, la Lady Justice is anything but blind. It's time she was blindfolded again. Wouldn't hurt to take away her sword either. Election Day. 
Uh, more than a year of announcements, debates, and speeches and rallies have come to an end on, American, on November 5th, 68, with Election Day. Millions of Americans have lined up at school, gymnasiums, libraries, civil centers, and fire stations all across the nation to fulfill their civic and democratic duty. This year marks a 46th quadrennial presidential election. But there will also be 21 state gubernatural elections to be decided to decide state governors, 34 Senate elites, seats, and all 435 seats in the House of Representatives, and many other local and state elections for mayor, counselors, sheriffs, and judges all across the nation. However, the presidential election is what everyone's turning into the TV and ready to learn about as the polls are closed. As the night goes on, and the votes are counted and reported, it soon become clear who will become sitting in the White House for the next four years of President Kennedy. Oh, well, crap. So, with that in mind, I will be right back. All right, my friends, and here we are. We have... President Glenn. So unfortunately, it is January 23rd, 1969. Between this and the fade out earlier, nothing really happened. I'll be honest though, I hate to say this, I really do, but I had used console commands, actually, even looking into the save game files to make sure that Glenn got elected. Because honestly, we had an extremely successful RFK run, and if you want to have an RFK run that's really, really su successful, at least so far up until like 1969 just do exactly what I did cuz we did really great but like I said earlier I had to use console commands because I really wanted Glenn really really wa wanted him unfortunately my plan actually if okay at the time of this recording uh, Paradox was releasing the Battle for the Bosphorus DLC so this mod all mods at the time of this recording are going to be like out of date which sucks because it was my plan to eventually, since we were so successful with RFK, split this into two campaigns, one with this very, very successful RFK, and one with John Glenn, but unfortunately I can't do that right now. But we're going to continue with Glenn, and in the future I will come back and play as an extremely successful RFK, and maybe a not so successful RFK as well, in which we will get someone else. But regardless, Godspeed, John Glenn. He figured his heart had never been beaten so fast or so hard in his life, as a heavy staccato rhythm threatened to pop out of his chest. In 46 years of life, he had been blessed with many momentous occasions, flying his first combat mission over the Marshall Islands, careening towards the stars of Friendship 7, even quitting NASA after Nixon cut its funding. However, all of those life-changing events seemed trivial as a host of his countrymen stared in admiration as he slipped his hands off of that pristine little Bible upon which he swore the oath of office. Now, millions keenly watched him standing in front of the Lincoln Memorial to hear his first words as president, words that would define the fate of his country and possibly all of mankind today. We as a nation are brought together not to celebrate the victory of a man, but a movement and an idea. We celebrate the, the idea that our homeland is indeed a great society, one unsullied by war or autocracy or depression. We celebrate and reaffirm our dedication to freedom, democracy, and the self-determination of all peoples. To make our celebrated ideals into appreciable ones, we must begin anew as a people, just as the world begins anew with the changing of the age and the passing of the generational torch. This new page of human history has been brought with it many innovations and yet more uncertainties. From these innovations have spawned both terrors and wonders, so much will... Some which with the potential to save mankind, and yet others with the capability to destroy it. To truly be a great and freedom-loving society, we must not we must not appreciate the, those creations of man that implants a balance of terror upon the whole of the species. Rather, we should celebrate and develop those creations which may yet bring us to the depths of the oceans or the distant light of the scar stars. President Glenn stood slightly taller as tens of thousands of once dreary, blank faces erupted into smiles and cheers and applause. Through 149 combat missions, three trips to space, two governorships of Ohio, and a presidential election, he had followed the tides and turns of his life and his country. Now it seemed his solemn, God-given duty to let his country follow him, ex nihilo, ad, ad astra. Cool, so I, I really want to apologize. I don't like using Collins commands when I have to, but I, I from the very first episode, I wanted to get John Glenn. And actually, between the fade in and fade out, between this part and the earlier part of this, this specific episode... Uh, there's literally been 12 hours, and I've not spent 12 hours trying to find console commands or editing save files to get this, but it's been a while, and right now, it, whatever. It's just, I, I hate using console commands, but I since the very first episode, I wanted to get Glenn. So, I apologize if you don't like it, but I had to do what I had to do, and I'll come back to you RFK someday. But under the bold new leadership of John Glenn... The RDs have recovered from their shocking defeat in 64 and will lead America into a new age, an age of prosperity, equality, and above all, progress. While the celebrations are ending, we will need to appoint a new cabinet and prepare ourselves for the long road ahead. To succeed in our objectives, we must advocate to the American people on our behalf of the space program and manage our resources carefully to ensure extraterrestrial superiority. Our laboratories and engineers are standing by, prepared to turn America to its status as the most technologically advanced of the three superpowers. The manned spacecraft center has already been given orders to resume operations, and soon, Americans will return to space per aspera ad astra. And we've got some new decisions here. 
uh, which might be a little glitch right now because I had to use some stuff here. Jet Propulsion Lab. 25 research points. We can do that from successful missions and spend them on researching technologies that will help us in the future. Ooh, preparedness on all missions. That seems... Oh, and we have the uh, the budget of NASA, 680 million. Political landscape, I'll be honest, I really screwed up here a little bit. Actually, I didn't really screw up, but the NPP was so successful that they actually have... I had, Like I said, I had these console commands. The center NPP is 49 senators. They literally make up almost half of the entire Senate. Hmm. Hopefully that doesn't hurt us. But we have the budget of NASA and we have an approval rating that we need to keep in mind. But regardless, I'm, I've am i got to end the episode here. But regardless, hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already. And I'll see you tomorrow when we begin going back to space. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.